Now that we've established the formal theory for the value of information in single person decision problems and shown that the value of information is never negative, we're going to consider two examples where information can indeed have negative value. The first of these is called the Hirschleifer effect. Now, what happens with the Hirschleifer effect uh, or the reason that it occurs essentially is because when we introduce more information into a market, the possibilities for insurance are actually limited. And so it might be the case that consumers would prefer less information in an economy so that they can be uh, offered better insurance options. Let's go back to the uh, Rothschild Stiglitz model that we considered in the last lecture. And if we remember that under perfect information, the competitive equilibrium contracts looked like this. There were two types of consumers, a high risk consumer and a low risk type of consumer. And under perfect information, both consumers know their own type and firms are able to identify the different types of consumers and so insist that only high risk types buy contract CH and only low risk types buy contract CL. And in equilibrium, these contracts were characterized by two conditions. First of all, they were actuarially fair, which means the contracts earned zero expected profit. So the uh, contract for low risk types was somewhere along the blue ISO cost through the endowment we've labeled pi L equals zero. And the contract for the high risk types, um, CH, had to be somewhere along the red line, the red ISO cost line that passes through the endowment, the uh, ISO cost line labeled pi H equals zero. And then out of all of the contracts along these lines, in equilibrium, consumers had to be offered the most preferred of these contracts. And so this occurred at a tangency where we had the consumer's indifference curves tangent to each of these zero profit lines. And we showed formally that the own, where this occurs, uh, the consumers are offered full insurance. So these contracts are risk free. Under contract CL, the low risk consumer receives the same level of consumption in the good state and the bad state. And the same is true for contract CH. We next consider the case of void information. So this is when there is very little information in the economy. No consumer knows their own type and firms cannot distinguish between different types of consumers either. So individuals know only that there is a beta probability that they are low risk and a one minus beta probability that they are high risk. And so when calculating the probability of the bad state, we use this PX term, um, which was a beta one minus beta of the uh, mixture of the low risk and high risk probabilities of ending up in the bad state. OK, so consumers did this and firms did this. And so the actuarially fair full insurance contract was this point CX, where the indifference curve labeled IX is tangent to the pi X equals zero, the zero profit, uh, the zero profit ISO cost um, on the 45 degree line. And so under, under void information, these consumers are offered full insurance at the fair price. Let's go on paper now and discuss the Hirschleifer effect to see essentially whether if given a choice, consumers would rather have a situation of void information compared to a situation of perfect information. Okay, so let's go over some formal details and then we'll discuss this idea of the Hirschleifer effect. So we know now that um, for our Rothschild Stiglitz model that the under perfect information, the equilibrium contract for high risk types, um, CH. Now these contracts are two dimensional, but they're, because it's risk free in equilibrium, I'm just going to write it as one number. And the value of that number has to equal the expected value of the high risk types endowment. 
which is pH times EB plus 1 minus pH times EG. Okay? And we also know that the low risk types are offered a zero profit uh, risk free contract. And so the value of their contract in equilibrium is PL times EB plus 1 minus PL times EG. Okay? Okay, so and now if we look at the, so this was perfect information where everybody knows everything, perfect information, all types are identifiable and each type of consumer knows their own type. Firms can tell the difference between different types of consumers. Let's compare that to void information. So for void information where um, the consumer didn't know their own type and firms obviously couldn't distinguish between types either. Well, then there was one contract, we called it CX and it was risk-free and it had expected value PX times EB plus one minus PX times EG, okay? Where this PX term was equal to beta, the proportion of low risk types in the market multiplied by PL plus one minus beta times pH. Okay, so even though types don't know, uh, even though consumers don't know their own types, they know the probability that they'll be low risk. They know the probability that they are high risk. And so they calculate an overall probability of ending up in the bad state that is used to evaluate their endowment. And they're given something that's risk-free and, um, uh, and actuarially fair. So it has the same value as their endowment. Okay, so this was all from the last lecture. Now let's think about this a little more. Now, because I won't go through every step, but it is in the lecture notes. But because PX is a beta 1 minus beta mixture of PL and PH, what you can show is that this CX is, is actually a beta mixture of CL and a 1 minus beta CH. Okay. So if I know that the risk, uh, the, if I know the high risk contract and the low risk contract, and I know beta, then I can calculate the uh, contract under void information by taking a beta one minus beta mixture. Okay. So it's just a few lines of algebra to prove that this term here is equal to this here. Okay. So, uh, Let's think about the, the utility that the consumers enjoy in the void information equilibrium. Okay, they essentially just get the utility of CX, which is a risk free thing, which is equal to the utility of beta CL plus one minus beta CH. Okay, now let's think about the definition of risk aversion. We said that our um, our consumers in this model were strictly risk averse, which means this utility function is strictly concave. And so this utility here is strictly greater than a beta mixture of C, the utility of CL plus one minus beta mixture of the utility of CH. Okay, so that's just a basic mathematical fact using the strict concavity of the utility function. But let's think about what this means. Okay, well, let's suppose we start with void information. Okay, in which case this is the level of utility. Okay, and now suppose I announce that, well, I, we are going to release all information about everybody's types and everybody is going to know it. OK, would would you like me to do that? Essentially, if I ask a consumer, would you like me to make perfect information available? OK, so we start with void information and then ask the consumer, would you like us to release all information so everybody knows it? Well, in a sense, accepting me releasing all that information is like taking a gamble. The consumer says, well, if you release all that information, there's a beta chance that I'll be low risk, in which case this is my utility. 
and there's a one minus beta chance that I'll be high risk and this will be my utility. So by accepting the gamble of uh, allowing all this information to be released, I'm essentially uh, accepting something with this level of expected utility. But under void information, I'm already enjoying a level of utility that is higher than accepting that gamble. Okay, so in a sense here, the void information would be preferred to um, accepting the, well, let's call it the gamble of all information being released, okay, or being made available. So in a, in a sense, this, this decision maker will prefer the economy to have no information than to have perfect information. So this is what we call the Hirschleifer effect. After the economist Hirschleifer. Um, so what's going on with this Hirschleifer effect? Effectively, well, you could think of it like this. This CX, this contract uh, for void information, really it's serving two purposes. Of course, it's ensuring our consumers against the bad state. OK, that's one one role it's playing. They're fully insured against the bad state. But because it's um, taking into account that they might be low risk or high risk, it's also serving the role of insuring them against being high risk. OK, so it's like being in, it's, it's like being insured against being high risk and being insured against the bad state. If I compare that situation of being insured against being high risk with a situation where everybody would know if I was high risk or low risk, then I would rather nobody knew and take the full insurance. Okay. Sometimes this is called the insurance destruction effect of information, which sounds rather dramatic. But essentially, once information is released into a market and everybody knows it's there, we can no longer insure individuals against not having that information when they know they have it. Okay. I can't insure somebody against being a high risk type when I know that they know whether they're high risk or not. Okay. So this comes back to that problem. It's not so much the information that's the problem. It's being known to know that information. If firms know that consumers know their own type, they know these consumers know whether they're high risk or low risk, then they cannot offer them insurance against being high risk. Presumably only high risk types would accept such an insurance anyway. All of the low risk types would just want CL and would be able to get it under perfect information, okay? So void information here seems to have the highest welfare of all. Perfect information seems to have less welfare. And of course, asymmetric information, uh, CH is the same, and this CL just gets even worse. So asymmetric information is the very worst. Perfect information is slightly better, but void information, no information at all, seems to be the most preferred uh, situation for this type of market. That is the Hirschleifer effect.